good afternoon everyone present research uh, its subject code is 2171901 now we must have questions regarding what do you mean by operation research since this kind of subject is being offered uh, in your seventh semester we must have certain curiosity to know about operation research this uh, topic was uh, invented uh, during uh, second world war so after the first world war uh, what happens that the there, there are entire world was uh, having scarcity of resources so uh, entire world and mostly we can say europe and european countries were in search of resources and uh, from that what they did they called upon a meeting for a scientists and mathematicians in order to use it, the res uh, the resources that they were having wisely so that they can plan the resources for the second world war and they can plan it wisely such that they will be using optimum uh, resources and they can uh, win the war of the second world war so the scientist came across uh, the world and Euro under europe the scientists have been worked upon and they have developed uh, so many strategies to which we are calling uh, the strategies of operation research so operation research came across uh, uh, from the second world war in order to win the war how to effectively use the resources that we have now just let us have a quick look on teaching scheme and examination scheme since the subject is having total three lectures per week and one tutorial which means two hours three hours of lecture two hours of tutorial sessions so total uh, we have to spend five hours for this week, but since it is a lockdown situation, we will be having four lecture sessions per week. Two will be taken by me and the two will be taken by Nikul Dratsa. And the total credit for the entire subject is five credit. Uh, then if you talk about the examination patterns, we are having the 30 marks for mid-sem and 70 mark for end semester examination. And uh, in the term work and practical, we will be having 20 marks of submission and 30 marks of external viva. So that is the entire teaching scheme for the uh, <coughs> operation research subject. Now let us have a quick look on the chapters. The first chapter is uh, operation research, wherein you will be uh, teaching the evolution of operation research. Like I said, uh, the origin of the research or evolution of uh, the uh, this topic is from Second World War to reuse the resources because the entire world was uh, on scarcity of the resources and they wanted to use it for the Second World War wisely so that they uh, called upon scientists and mathematicians and they came across the world, sit together and developed certain strategies so that we can one win the war with the lesser resources okay uh, then next is uh, linear programming in linear programming uh, this uh, uh, method of uh, operation research can be used to solve the problems in industries uh, mostly we can call about the uh, like assembling industry or a machining industry wherein uh, mostly if we observe, let us take an uh, example to learn this. Uh, if we talk about these, uh, a workshop wherein so many numbers of machines are there like, uh, like say 10 grinding machines, uh, 15 lath machine, uh, 6 to 7 lath, uh, sorry, milling machine, 1 to shepherd, 1 to drill, like we are having so many machines. So when we are having the job, the job is having lath operation first, so it goes to lath operation, then it has some milling operation, then it goes to milling operation, then it goes to shepherd or a slotting machine, then it goes to uh, drilling operation. So likewise, the workpiece has to move from one machine to the series of machines. So we have to set uh, the path such that none or very or least possible machines can be <coughs> can be uh, stayed idle okay so we must increase the i would say in simple words that this technique can be used to utilize machine as much as possible mostly we are expecting it to be 100 percent but i would say 
as much as possible so this topic will give you and we will be elaborating each and every strategies once we start learning the chapter at how to use the machine wisely um, and mostly you might have heard and job am machine so we are having like uh, five jobs to be machined on 10 machines so it sets on path that uh, this operation should be start first this operation should be uh, start next to that and the next operation should be start next to next to next that so in such a way manner we can set the operation sequence we can select the uh, procedure of the sequence and we can set the entire work plan for that and so that we can say that we are with the last utilization of machine we can <coughs> the last utilization of machine we can run the facilities that we have right now um, and this also helps you to learn regarding how to give maximum uh, productivity with the less resources available okay so uh, it works on that area that is linear programming problem then the, the next method that we have that is transportation and assignment in transportation uh, and assignments uh, let us take the example of uh, the institutes or school buses there are so many kids or uh, children are uh, located at distinctive location all over the city so the bus uh, or at any transportation medium maybe vans or a auto rickshaw should be planned such that they have to utilize minimum number of possible buses and they can reach out to as maximum as possible kids in a shortest possible time okay so it should not be like that uh, the machine or uh, sorry if it is run on idle mode then i would say that, then we can say that uh, we are picking up certain kids from that particular location we are moving all over the entire city skipping certain kids which comes on that way and we will reach to the destination and other auto rickshaw or bus or a school when will pick that kid which was being left out because we are not aware with the system so in this case what we can do we can utilize our resources such that we can have least possible transportation and we can least um, and we can reach to the destination in least possible time without moving maximum movement okay so that is how we will do uh, if i talk about the other sense we can then we can say that we can reduce the transportation within the industry which uh, which is of larger size so we can uh, reduce the transportation cost of a workplace which is to be machine or we can say raw material from one machine to the other machine such that we can use it widely suppose that if i wanted to machine milling machine then after the next is lath machine which is next to me but it is not free so i should not be utilizing uh, i should not be planned such that the workpiece which is coming out of the milling machine should not be set to the work uh, lath machine which is on the other plant but it should be on the same plant or the same work shed so it, we should be wait uh, we should be discussing on such that Either we should wait for the, the lath machine to be freed or we have to uh, set the other parameter so that we can, based on that comparison, we must do the decision. So that type of thing could be there on transportation. Next is assignment. In assignments, we can say that uh, it can be used to uh, locate and uh, if we talk about case studies regarding assignments, then we can, uh, it is best to use the salesman. Uh, if we talk about uh, salesman for drugs or a salesman for uh, mobile shops so there are so many mobile shops are there so each and every uh, salesman are attending this kind of uh, shops so they have to uh, set the travel path and we and the uh, company or a manufacturer have to assign particular person so that they can they do not need to move as and when there. Now let us take about the salesman. Now Rajput is a central or a zone for the Saurast Kutch region. So if the one salesperson is there, then he can accommodate uh, the nearby location like Junagar, Jamnagar, Kutch, uh, like this kind of area. So it should not be like that the person from Mumbai comes to visit Junagar, Jamnagar and to attend certain problems. So they have to assign the nearby person the task and that person will uh, run the task and solve it on its own. 
so that this is how we can solve the transportation and assignments problem which are being uh, like a service to the <laughs> customers now the next is queuing theory queuing theory is like uh, we are standing on a queue like on a movie theater on a shopping or on a mall like so what basic thing that we know about queuing theory is that once we are let, let us take the case of movie theater and we are going to purchase a movie ticket so and they are having only 10 tickets and the number of person which is standing on a line is a 15 so that we are having multiple approaches like first in first out last in last out so we are working in that sense lilo pipo last in last out first in first out otherwise it could be like first in last out and last in first out there are four strategies basic strategies which we might have studied or we are in aware of that now if you talk about uh, the movie theory movie theater case then in that case uh, the number of person are standing on our queue that is 15 and the number of tickets would be 10 so the first 10 will grab the ticket and the 11th will come, uh, come to know that theater is houseful there is there are no more tickets so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all will be have to let. So in order to move out from the queue, the last person has to move it first. Okay, so that is how we can say that last in, first out. If we talk about other cases, like if we are on a hospital line or a, any other such lines, sometimes we have to operate like first in, first out. Sometimes we have to operate like last in, first out. So these are the strategies that we will be learning during the queuing theory and there will be different queuing models will be there okay and uh, one of the uh, famous version is candles notation in movie ticket line suppose that we have just one entry and we have to exit back if we wanted to move out okay so when we the when the first 10 person will have a ticket then the line is over now they have stopped the line so we have to move back from the same queue so the last person entered last they, he has or she has to move first so that the others can move out like this so the sequence could be like first the, the person who entered first that is 11 the number but the, he or she cannot move as the line is closed okay so what will happen now the 15 person has to move back so that the 14 can move back then after 13 then after 12 and then after 11 so it is like the person who uh, entered first cannot leave first, but the entered uh, the person entered last can move out first. So it is last in, first out. Okay. Now with one more example, you will learn it betterly. Suppose that you applied for a government job. In government job, how they will address? They will address it first come first serve basis. So the person who applied first will enter first, or the person who scored most. Uh, he will be join the government job first but when government wants to remove certain percentage from the job then the, their scenario would be like what the last person who entered will be removed first so i hope that that example would be the best to understand the queuing last in first down am i communicating clear Okay, now let's, pro let's proceed further. After queuing, you will be learning inventory. Does anybody know what do you mean by inventory? What do you mean by inventory control? Can anybody tell me? Everyone are doing it on daily basis. That is why I'm asking, what do you mean by inventory? Prashant is saying it is a stock of raw material, okay? What is the other aspect of, of the meaning of inventory control? Can anybody share it? That is right so far. Storage control, uh, Tula said, then Prashant says stock of tools and other equipments. You also said stock of raw materials, good. Uh, how, to what you are calling inventory on a daily basis? We are not the daily buying or a, uh, changing the tools or equipments. I'm talking about daily so that you will be understanding it basically. 
any idea on a day to day life yes household items am i right tulas that is what you are that is what you wanted to say yeah so household item inventory control means what the resources okay controlling of resources we will be learning in this chapter different aspects of inventory different types of inventory and like classification and all and we will see how the inventory can be used wisely now we will be understanding just briefly how sorry what is inventory first and then we will know how we can control the inventory now in that case let me take one example that uh, in <coughs> in the month of july uh the uh, most of the i think sauras people or the indian people is having mentality that we have to store certain grains we we are storing certain grains and depends on the number of persons living in a house we will be storing okay now if i am uh, earning good then i will be storing for entire year but if i am storing uh, if i am uh, earning on a daily basis like uh, 300 rupees or 500 or 600 rupees a day then i will be storing accordingly okay is that clear so the uh, the inventory purchase of inventory depends on first the income i would say if we talk about industry then i would say if i am having uh, like uh, lakhs of rupees available as of spare money then i will be buying lots of equipment which is to be needed for my further production process but if i am uh, dealing with some shortages of money then i would be purchasing it on requirement basis so inventory that is what just a basic meaning of inventory that is the uh, uh, needed of raw material tools equipments machine anything which we can call a resources to the production or resources to the household cases if we talk about the domestic purpose of inventory okay now how what we do suppose that if i wanted to manufacture if i wanted to manufacture a machine and for that machines we will be using uh, nuts and bolts for assembly process we will be needing uh, nuts and bolts if i am purchasing uh, sorry if i am producing 100 machines per day uh, <coughs> then i would be needing uh, 500 bolts and nuts per day so how do i store them it i depend on its cost i will be storing first if the cost is very less then i would be storing it little bit higher amount uh, okay if i would say 1 rupees or 2 rupees bolt cost then i will be storing it for a week but if the bolt is of 1000 uh, rupees a bolt then i would be storing it very lesser quantity so we can classify the uh, type of inventory in three category let us say highly costly then moderate and then cheaper so we will be storing our resources based on the cost it has okay in household item if i say we will not be storing a uh, certain goods <coughs> for entire year if my uh, income is limited to certain amount okay likewise in industry the same case can be applicable so uh, let us take that example 100 pieces of a particular assembly i have to make and for that i will be needing 500 nuts and bolts per day and which cost is which cost me very less amount okay so i will be storing it for a week or a two week okay now if the costing of that particular if the costing of that particular equipment uh, is uh, expensive then i would be storing it for a one day or maybe for a two day then i will be keeping it on uh, purchasing i will be keeping it on purchasing okay and now so kare sakun daily basis upar based on the requirements i will be asking so that is what inventory control and inventory usage now in if we talk about inventory usage now let us say as i said i need 500 nuts and bolts in order to assemble 100 machines a day so uh, on the first day i will uh, once i will be having 100 sorry 500 nuts and bolts and at the end i have used consumed all the nuts and bolts and i have uh, prepared uh, 100 assembly that i wanted to build okay so on next day i must have again that so there must not be incoming there must be not be any disturbance in incoming flow as well as there must not be any uh, disturbance in outflow okay so the inventory must be 
as on as going on so that is what inventory control and the last and the one of the most interesting topic is abc analysis that you will be learning in here and that will be able you will be able to use it for as a project purpose or else you will be use it for a domestic purpose if you wanted to in order to balance your daily needs and your if you are belongs to the medium or a lesser income range now abc analysis tells us what abc analysis means the storage cost abc analysis uh, tells you to how much amount of quantity that you should store now abc stands for product a product b product c or uh, category of product a category of product b category of product c you are dividing your number of products that you wanted to have for a particular assembly or for a particular requirement that you will be categorizing it okay so once you categorize a that means may, it may be uh, expensive then b moderate and c cheaper so you will be uh, storing um, expensive uh, quantity lesser moderate moderately storing and uh, the uh, the quantity which is uh, cheap then you will be storing it little bit high quantity okay uh, let us take the uh, case of uh, let us i am machining on a ms bar okay i will be machining on a ms bar and for that i will be using carbide insert tool so if i wanted to store raw material then i would be since uh, ms bar is very cheap as we can say so we will be storing it in a high quantity but if i wanted to store the insert okay then i will not be storing it in terms of racks i will be storing it in a certain number of things so that is what the inventory control and wherein you will be having one important term that is abc analysis okay so wherein you will be able to know how much quantity that you would like to store and that you supposed to store so that your uh, inventory that is resources and the cost of that resources that is your financial will not disturb at all okay now let us talk about replacement theory replacement theory is a very good phenomena from the Uh, this topic and wherein you will learn let us say you are uh, living in a house which is 10 15 years old so it obviously it must be having uh, the older equipments so let us talk about the bulbs suppose that you are having cfl bulbs okay so you supposed to calculate that uh, at when it is advisable at when it is advisable to replace the bulbs from cfl to the led bulb LED bulb is a little bit costly than compared to the CFL bulb, but so you have to decide that at what period of time. If you just purchase a CFL bulb and you wanted to replace, it, then it would cost you a lot, and you will be losing lots of amount in that. So, but after certain period of usage, uh, you will be able to see that the chart will tell you that at certain period of time, once you used it, then after if you further use it. you might not be able to save it more so that it is advisable to change likewise the same thing can be uh, happen with the machine if you use machine for a 5 year 6 year or 10 year or uh, predefined life span of the uh, machine then after certain period of time uh, you will have break even point break even point means what uh, after that point you will not have uh, benefit sorry you will not have profit or loss this means that whatever you investment in a particular amount that you have already gained so after that whatever uh, we will be doing that will be net benefit or net profit of it so replacement theory will tell you that at what and at when period at when you have to change a particular machine uh, or a bulb or a particular entity okay uh, wherein you will be learning different strategies with uh, uh, different cases that it is allow uh, let me take one more example uh, let us expand our cases from home to the entire city we are living in a rajkot city if, I, if the rmc uh, has uh, <coughs> if the rajkot municipal corporation installed cfl bulb 4 years ago okay and they cost you so and so amount of money now after one or two year they are planning to change it from a, a cfl bulb to the led bulb they have to do some costing analysis for the uh, cfl bulb what is the cost of cfl bulb right now and at, at one it will be zero and uh, they have to get the costing of uh, led bulb so they will be able to know that when it is advisable to change or replace the 
bulk. So that would be the bigger cases that we can take as a part of project. The same way you can take it as a project report also. Okay, in industry there are so many machines. So if they are particularly using this kind of theory, they will be able to know this kind. Now if we talk about a broader aspect as of nation, then if the government wants to replace or cancel on their own machine or their vehicles, since it is a government has thousands or tens of thousands of vehicles, so when it is advisable to replace okay, the vehicles, so they will be thinking on that. Uh, and you might have observed uh, replacement that uh, mostly the people will change the car at seven years. Mostly most people will change the car at seven years. It is based on this kind of theory that it is advisable to replace the car rather than uh, uh, adds on burden of repairing cost. So after six to seven years of car, what people will do once it starts giving or once it starts adding the budget about repairing cost before just before that it is better if we replace the car with the new one. Okay, and after six to seven years you will get a return amount as a good amount and you can use it for the next investment. Okay, so it would be like the replacement cases. Uh, then the next case would be of game theory. In game theory, uh, it is like a, a comparison of two firms, like my firm, I am having certain firm and for which I am having my own strategy of working. I am having my own strategy and the other company is working on other strategy. And if I wanted to move on my uh, charts on higher, on financial, on investment or on return, then if I wanted to increase uh, my level of uh, profits and earnings uh, as compared to him, then I, I as opposed to study both the theory that if I if uh, we are both in the same business, then I should be comparing my strategy along with his strategy, and we will be finding out the solutions of <coughs> we have to find out the solutions so that I would be able to gain better profit. Now let us say if uh, I'm having a clothing industry, I'm, I'm producer of uh, shirts and jeans and t-shirts and I'm having the other person as of shirts and jeans and all, but uh, the other person is earning higher than compared to me uh, and the both of the person are having the same scale of uh, industry. Since also he is having certain plans says that, that the other person or the company B is earning far more better than me. Then I supposed to analyze his first and then mine that what he is doing other than me. So once after that, once you analyze that then you will come to know that there are certain points that you are lacking. So that if you cross down that points and you change your strategies as compared to him, then you will be able to earn more. So that is what a game theory. Okay. Now the next chapter that is decision theory. In decision theory, uh, uh, it is like total like decision making. It, it's like a playing like a card game or something like that. In decision theory, how do we understand it? It's like that there are certain points where we must take risk. There are certain positions where we don't take risk. So we should be uh, think on a certain parameters that uh, after so and so, if, if it falls to that, then I should be taking risk. And if it falls to, if it not falls to that, I suppose not to take the risk. So that the entire decision theory based on certain risk and sometimes and many times you might have heard that higher the risk higher the profit but higher the risk higher the chances of loss also so it is was done that and here you will be uh, learn uh, different decision theory based on uh, certain cases we will be able to uh, teach you how the situation can be handled and how the decision can be made if the situation arises in the industries or the firms or etc. Okay. Uh, the next is uh, project management. In project management, uh, what it does, what it tells that uh, we will be using critical path method. We will be using the critical path method. Now, critical means the shortest path. In order to complete the project, what could be the shortest path? What is what could be the shortest path to that we are calling critical path. So we must find out the critical path by which we will finish the product without affecting the other projects or the other entities. So we will be learning here that 
now uh, if i am having if i have to finish one job like and that job is to be machined through first cnc uh, CN, first is lath machine then milling then grinding and the slotting machine so if uh, lath machine is being over then it is supposed to go to milling machine but if the milling machine is not free then i am supposed to divert the lath job to the other operation if it is feasible if it is feasible to slot it first or uh, milling or uh, drilling it first then milling will can be done then i supposed to change the path and i supposed to operate the other process and if it does not disturb the existing then i will change the other which is which was not free at that time i will be using it now and then i will be finishing the process so that the wastage or uh, the idle time or we can say delay time can be saved so that is what the entire project management system is wherein you will be learning different strategies how we can say that okay that is we can say shortest path to finish out the project or a system or a job or a task okay any doubt within all these chapters total we have nine chapters in total we will be learning total nine chapters out of which i will be taking inventory control which is this part uh, second is uh, sorry first is queuing then inventory then replacement then decision theory and the last is uh, which is not mentioned okay so these are the chapters that we will be covering the rest chapters will be covered by uh, my subject partner which is nikun rat sir okay so if you have any doubt please put that on chat box since no questions are there let us uh, have a look quick look about the course outcome so once you learn this entire subject you will be able to describe the characteristics and scopes of or characteristics and scopes over that i wrote already this entire subject is being related to what related to win the war right now we are not in a war but we are having a competition so we can say in the other terms as uh this entire subject will help you to how you can win the competition uh using your resources wisely effectively and optimize way okay second uh, uh what you will be able to you will be able to define formulate mathematical problem now uh, uh, the mathematical problems is like uh, if i wanted to change the system then i supposed to get maximum profit with minimum input so i should be my objective function sometimes should be maximization so for my case maximum of the profit if i am setting or calculating about losses then my objective function would be on minimization and that would be minimization of losses minimization of inputs like that so i will be able to formulate my problems mathematically okay so and uh after this you will be able to select optimal problem solving techniques for a linear program what i said while uh, explaining linear problem is that a number of machines and number of job so we have to uh, operate number of machines such that we will be able to produce number of jobs without keeping idle or without keeping as least as possible ideal machine so that we can have best utilization of the purpose here we can say that maximization of resources or utilize maximization of utilization of resources okay and minimization of idle time okay these are this could be my objective function which i would like to achieve it then also you will be able to formulate uh, and solve transportation or traveling of a salesman and transshipment problems now let me tell you one more example which i just recalled right now if you are aware that amazon uh, is giving 24 by 7 delivery okay wherein if you are living in a metro city they will be giving you the delivery in 24 hours as and if you are nearby to it they are offering it 48 hours delivery how it is possible does anybody know 
anybody can tell me how is it possible to deliver the product in just 48 hour anywhere across india if you are a prime membership how they are able to achieve it if you know the process i will unmute your mic and you will be able to answer it so that others can understand it is a very good phenomena regarding this transportation and assignment problems anyone have any idea regarding that see uh, tulas said that maybe they have distributed all over the nation now let us say that i ordered some mobile phone which uh, they they have to deliver it from bangalore or from kanyakumari how is it possible to get it on 48 hours in rajkot or somewhere nearby in rajkot my question let me repeat the question for prashant that uh, how amazon is able to deliver food uh, deliver within 48 hours of their good to us anywhere across india from anywhere across india what's up hello Sir. Hello. Is the question clear? Yes, exactly. Right one from the nearest warehouse. If we talk about Amazon have one. Amazon have open. Yes, yes, Bobby. Amazon has their own storehouse. We can call it a warehouse. Amazon has their own. Amazon owns so many warehouses all over across India. In the metro cities, they are having all the bigger warehouse wherein the seller stores their selected amount of quantity every time based on the needs. Maybe. if my product demands high amount then i will be storing my 20 or 10 20 or 15 percentage of my required quantity i will be keeping store as a backup store all over the time if my uh, uh, consumption of the product is little bit slow then i might be storing it 5 to 10 percent based on the requirement every seller occupies certain space on amazon store so if i order it from a mobile phone it might not be able to get it from bangalore to rajkot but it can be from amazon store amazon warehouse which is in amdavad to the rajkot so they will be able to deliver in 24 hours or maybe maximum to 48 hours so that is what the case of transportation if uh, they ship a single mobile phone from bangalore to rajkot they may cost you a lot but but since they are having a warehouse in amdavad it might cost them very lesser and one more thing if the seller is from uh, is if the seller is from uh, hyderabad then they have to send uh, hyderabad to amdavad but if they send single product it can cost him a lot but if it is like a, a 10 or 15% of the, their concept which can be 100 or 500 components then they, if they send it in a bulk then they can store they can cost transportation cost could be lesser and entire shipment can be distributed all over amdavad or rajkot or nearby region rapidly and economically so are you getting the things that you can learn and that you can apply in order to start your business in such that okay so that is what the good case study which we can have it or similar we can have it when we learn it so that is what transportation and traveling that we see now you will be able to formulate and solve always uh, optimize problems related to job work and assignment like what i said and job and machines that you will be solving so none machine can be work idle and job will be continuously on machining mode now you will be able to demonstrate and solve the models of games theory so for this you can do cases of two company like if we talk about cnc machines then you can take uh, jyoti and you can compare mac power why jyoti is uh, in market uh, higher than that of the mac power if i say my experience then i would say 
Jyoti is why because Jyoti is giving good customer service. Jyoti is giving a good customer service, and that is why they will be able to reach so many people on time. They are having all uh, their uh, maintenance guy all over the major cities. So that if I am in Ahmedabad, I need not to send my people from Rajkot to Ahmedabad, which is a transportation assignment case. And since that manager, that Ahmedabad person can reach to the uh, industrial zone in the Ahmedabad faster, then he will be able to uh, use the machine more. And we will not be wasting time from distancing, moving distancing from Rajkot to Ahmedabad, which may cost us loss which may waste their time and we can have that sense. So that is why we can say that uh, good marketing strategy, good customer feedback or customer satisfaction strategy can increase your business. So that is what you can compare two cases and you can give uh, a better idea to the person who owns the industry. That is what a game theory, which is totally based on comparison. So you will can take two cases while learning this uh, theory. Uh, then also you will be able to evaluate optimum solution finding dynamic programming that you will be learning in detail when you will be learn linear programming problems. The last topic would be of dynamic programming. Then also you will be able to choose or devise appropriate queuing model for practical application. Suppose that you are having a practical situations wherein you wanted to use certain appropriate queuing model then which model but we will be seeing that uh, different models when we will be learning the particular chapter. So which model is better that you will be able to select based on the comparison of different models. Then the last outcome would be that you will be able to solve different problems related to network. Network is nothing but the, that is the last chapter that we have, that is CPM, critical path method. So from complex uh, network, you will be able to find the shortest way to accomplish your project on time so that you will be able to solve it. And you will able to finish your project on time or sometimes before the times or the deadlines. Okay. Now the Prashant is having questions, so I'm unmuting you. And if you want to, to ask questions, just share me. I will unmute your mic. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. You can unmute yourselves based on if you wanted to ask questions. Now Prashant, Hello, you can sir. ask questions. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Prashant, you can ask question. Hello? Anyone wants to, if anyone wants to ask question, just unmute yourself. You are, you will, you can unmute yourself and you can ask question. Okay, so no doubt is there. So you can uh, again type your enrollment number, space name, space uh, division, and uh, you can leave. Have a nice day. We will meet you tomorrow. Before leaving, you must write your name, uh, enrollment number, space name, space division. Have a nice day.